Hi friends, you are watching Gate Helpline and in this video, we will see question number 15 from Gate 2020 CS question paper. Friends, please hit the subscribe button and click the bell icon to get all the latest updates regarding Gate exam. So friends, question number 15 is from Computer Network and the question is, consider the following statements about the functionality of an IEP based router. And the statements are first, a router does not modify the IP packets during forwarding. Second, it is not necessary for a router to implement any routing protocol. Third, a router should reassemble IP fragments if the MTU of the outgoing link is larger than the size of the incoming IP packet. Which of the above statements is are true? And the options are A, B, C, and D. So friends, now we will see explanation to this question. And the question here is, we are given with the three statements and we need to tell among the three statements, which statement is true. So friends, let's start with statement one. That is, a router does not modify the IP packets during forwarding. And here we need to find whether a router modifies the IP packets or not. So first of all, we'll try to find out what an IP packet means. So friends, each IP packet contains both a header and data. The header includes IP addresses of source and destination. These are the IP addresses and this is the header. And below we have the data plus other fields that helps to route the packet such as version, length, packet length, time to live, transport and header checksum. And this is the fragment offset. And these are the fields which actually used to find out whether the data is actually able to reach the destination or not. So the data is actual content such as string of letters or part of web page. Just like the postal system routes postal letters around the world, the internet protocol routes IP packets around the internet. So friends, in IP packet, the field which we need to notice is time to live. That is this one. So now we will explain what time to live exactly is and whether a router modifies time to live or not. So friends, TTL means TTL is a well-known mechanism. In the IP header is a field of 8 bits that signifies the time that a packet still has before its life ends and is dropped. When an IP packet is sent, its TTL is usually 255 and is then decremented by 1 at each hop. If the TTL reaches 0, the packet is dropped. In such a case, the router has dropped the IP packet for which the TTL reaches 0. Sends an ICMP, that is Internet Control Message Protocol, message type 11 and code 0, time exceeded to the originator of the IP packet. And with the help of this diagram, you can see that the TTL has been decreased to 2 here, and then it is again decreased by 1 and it becomes 1. And at this point, the TTL has expired. So this hop will send an ICMP message that it is it has exceeded the time and the TTL equals to 255. And then again the ICMP message moves back to the hops with the message of TTL equals to 254. And this process will go on till the originator of the IP packet with TTL equals to 0, which informs the originator that the TTL has expired. That is the reason the message has not been sent to the correct router or the destination machine. So friends, this simply means a router does not modify the IP packet during forwarding is wrong. IP packets are modified on the expiry of TTL by routers. So point one is false. So friends, now we'll see statement two. That is, it is not necessary for a router to implement any routing protocol. So friends, here we'll see whether it is necessary or not necessary for a router to implement any routing protocol. So friends, now we will see functions of a router. The router basically performs two major functions. The first one is called forwarding. Router receives the packet from its input port, checks its header, performs some basic functions like checking checksum and then looks up to the routing table to find the appropriate output port to dump the packets onto and forward the packets onto the output port. This is called forwarding. And the second function is routing. Routing is the process by which routers ascertain 
what is the best path for the packet to reach the destination. It maintains a routing table which is made using different algorithms by the routers only. And these are the two functions which a router perform to send a packet from one router to another router. So friends, now we'll see what is a routing protocol. Routing protocols are the means by which routers exchange next hop reachability information with each other. So it is just a protocol which helps the routers to know the next hop reachability information with each other. A routing protocol enables one router to tell all the other routers to which it is connected about the network that it can reach and this is being used to find the best path between the routers and the, some of the examples of best routing protocols are OSPF, EIGRP, ISIS and BGP are examples of routing protocols. So friends here without finding the best path a router can also send the information to other routers using the forwarding mechanism or the forwarding function. So a router need not implement any routing protocol. It can just forward packets in all the directions and perform routing. So friends, this states point 2 is true. So friends, now we'll see statement 3. That is, a router should reassemble IP fragments if the MTU of the outgoing link is larger than the size of the incoming IP packet. So friends, here we need to tell whether a router should reassemble IP fragments or not. So first question which came into our mind is, what is IP fragments? So we'll find out what a IP fragment is. So another IP level consideration for packet filtering is fragmentation. One of the feature of IP is its ability to divide a large packet that otherwise couldn't have traversed some network link because of limitation of packet size along the link and called fragments which can traverse that link. The fragments are then reassembled into the full packets by the destination machine not by the machine at the end of the limited link. Once a packet is fragmented, it normally stays fragmented until it reaches destination. So friend, by this line, it is clear that the fragments are then reassembled into full packets by the destination machine. And it is not the machine at the end of the link because at the end of the link, we have routers. So this is responsibility of the destination machine not of the router so a router is not responsible for reassembling of ip fragments okay now normally any router can decide to fragment a packet so here we will see how the mtu will come into picture a flag in the ip header can be used to prevent routers from fragmenting packets so this is not necessary that a packet will get fragmented it is because of a flag in the ip header which can be used to prevent routers from fragmenting packets. Originally, this wasn't much used because a router that needs to fragment a packet but is forbidden to do so will have to reject the packet. That simply means if you are not allowing a router to fragment the packet, then it is going to simply reject the packet because the network link can't handle the size of the packet. And if it allows, it is going to failed in the communication which is generally less desirable than having a packet fragmented. However, there is now a system called path maximum transmission unit which discovers or discovery that uses the flag that prevents fragmentation. So this is the maximum transmission unit. So we we'll decide what is the maximum size of the transmitting unit for the IP packets. So friends, this entire explanation is being taken from this website. And the link is given in the description as well. So if you want to read more about this topic, you can go and click on this link in the description. So friends, as per the discussion, it simply means that router does not assemble the packets. Reassembling is done at the destination system. So point 3 is false statement. So friends, as per our explanation, answer to this question is option D. That is, out of the three statements, only statement 2 is the correct statement. So friends, thanks for watching our videos. Please like, subscribe and share our videos to appreciate our work. If you have any doubt or question, please comment below.